Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Hello everyone, today we will discuss reductive elimination. In the last class we have completed oxidative addition and we have seen three different mechanisms of oxidative addition. Today's class we will discuss reductive elimination also we will discuss as RE. Now reductive elimination is exactly the opposite of oxidative addition. It is like counting 1 to 100, 1, 2, 3, 4 and 98, 99, 900 and then reductive elimination will be if that is the forward direction is oxidative addition, reductive elimination will be counting back from 100, 99, 98, 97, 96, 95 so on to 1. So, you know technically there is really not much new things, but again you know reversing something is not that easy. That is why we need to discuss and the principles specifically we would like to focus. We will discuss reductive elimination very briefly. Once again, whatever you have learned in oxidative addition, if you can reverse it, okay, it is kind of microscopic reversibility of oxidative addition. Okay, Let us look at reductive elimination. So, reductive elimination will be starting from a ligand metal complex, ligand metal complex having A and B component. This is the species you get after oxidative addition of into A and B, right. So, the reductive elimination will be on the forward sense to give you L and M and A, B. You can understand that the backward direction of this would be oxidative addition. So, ligand metal complex interacting with A and B to give you ligand metal A B by oxidative addition. By reductive elimination R E, we are looking at that oxidatively added, added intermediate or an intermediate where a possibility of a bond formation between A and B can be looked into. Starting from that complex, we are going to generate ligand metal species as well as A and B. So, the new bond formation between A and B that is the reductive elimination from a organometallic intermediate. One of the requirements for this reductive elimination simply is A and B must be cis to each other, must be cis prior to reductive elimination for concerted reaction. You have seen in oxi oxidative addition we have three different uh, mechanism concerted radical and uh, your um, SN2 mechanism, but over here you need to have A and B in uh, you know, cis conformation before they want to reductively eliminate. Now, also you would understand the change in oxidation state from ligand metal A B is going to be minus 2, right. If you are starting the electron count for a ligand metal A B complex as 18 electron, after oxidative addition that will be 16 electron, sorry, uh, uh, after reductive elimination it will be 16 electron. In the oxidative addition you have seen if a 16 electron species is undergoing oxidative addition it is giving you 18 electron. So, for oxidative addition 16 goes to 18 and for reductive elimination 18 goes to 16. Now, if you have seen very carefully the effect of ligand on the metal complex are paramount are very very important. In, in oxidative addition. Similarly, for reductive elimination effect of ligand will be crucial. For oxidative addition you have seen 
smaller the ligand and electron richness of the ligand will also favor oxidative addition. Small ligand, electron rich ligand will favor oxidative addition. Now, since it is a reversal of oxidative addition, reductive elimination will sub be supported by a ligand which is bulky, which is very big. That means, it will not allow A and B to stay with the metal complex very, you know, very strongly. So, the big ligand will enhance the or enhance or facilitate the removal of A B. So, steric bulk of the ligand will be good for reductive elimination. Of course, another thing will be electron deficiency. If ligand is electron deficient, then a higher oxidation state such as you know in uh, 18 electron cases, higher oxidation state will not be favorable. Therefore, it will undergo ox reductive elimination to give you the product. Once again, for oxidative addition, you need a small ligand and electron rich ligand. For reductive elimination, you need a big ligand or so called sterically crowded ligand and electron deficient ligand to make it more facile. So, that is the kind of um, you know direct relation. So, let us uh, write down that fact. Reductive elimination Re accelerated by number 1 as we discuss reduction of electron density at m means metal and the bulkier ligand so of course as, as we also have tried to discuss reductive elimination usually a um, you know concerted process that means it's a metal a and b are interacting together it's almost uh, you know it's a sigma bond metathesis type of reaction you would see so it is usually a concerted process three centered reaction you can imagine so let's try to write down the transition state for this usually a concerted process Therefore, if you start with M, A and B complex, okay, from here you will have a transition state where these three components are interacting and finally, you will have M, A, B formation, fine. So, it is a, it's a concerted process and uh, therefore, you will have interaction between M, A and B. Therefore, finally, you will get M and A, B back. Now, in oxidative addition, we have seen depending on the mechanism, the stereochemistry can be influenced. If it is a concerted oxidative addition, we have seen retention of configuration of R x or A, B if there is any chiral center present. So, if you start with R isomer of a species, okay, then you will not see the inversion if a, if a chiral center will remain basically intact, right, for concerted one. For SN2, as you see, as all the SN2 reaction, you will have the, you know, inversion of the configuration at the AB or Rx, whatever we were discussing, if they are having a chiral center, then you will get an inversion. But for radical reaction, of course, we have seen that it is the racemization of the of the chiral center. Okay, so concerted oxidative addition gives you the retention, and your SN2 reaction gives you inversion, and radical mechanism gives you the racemization of the chiral center. Now, for reductive elimination, since we have seen it is usually a concerted mechanism, so most often or you know, almost nearly um, always we get retention of configuration. So, retention of configuration is for reductive elimination and cis configuration is usually uh, necessary for reductive elimination. Let me draw with an example.
retention of configuration. at A and B right. So, we would like to discuss one of the example very simply if you have a palladium complex where these two groups are there. Now, to have a compound like this you must be able to identify A and B very easily. This is A let us say and this is B. So, there will be bond formation between A and B to form a B species right after reductive elimination what you will get of course, you see that these two species are A and B are cis to each other overall at the end you will get this retention of configuration right. So, the stereochemistry is retained at this point and in this case ligand equal triphenyl phosphate ok. So, what you have seen right now is one example of the palladium. This is a palladium 2 oxidation state. This uh, palladium is having 2 plus oxidation state. A and B are redu getting reductively eliminated to give you the product with retention of configuration. Of course, another thing is it is not very common, but another thing is we can make the reductive elimination facile by adding adding exogenous ligand from ligand from outside you can add and show that this ligand might will be effective for promoting reductive elimination. So, if you have a ligand metal complex and reductive elimination is not facile the technique here sometime could be is simply add another ligand okay exogenous ligand from outside which will take out the electron density from the metal center. Therefore, in principle you can promote reductive elimination little bit faster than before. Of course, in every cases you are not going to get uh, you know reductive elimination faster. You have to have to in order to promote the reductive elimination by adding another ligand from outside you have to ensure that that ligand outside ligand is interacting with the metal complex with the metal and then taking out the electron density from the metal. Of course, it is not going to be feasible all, all, always, but sometime it is possible sometime it is possible to take out the electron density from the metal by adding ligand. Again you must remember that it is Although in principle generalized technique, but you need to have perfect choice of the ligand and without changing way too much of other things at the metal center, the ligand should be able to coordinate with the metal and should be able to take out the electron density from the metal. Therefore, almost like pi back donation type of thing, if that is feasible then you may have a possibility actually then you will have a possibility that reductive elimination can be made faster ok. Let us uh, discuss with one of the example. So, reductive elimination ok can be accelerated accelerated by addition of appropriate ligand ok. That is what we are trying to discuss right now. The example you need to have for these cases or one of the seminal example is the complex with bipyridine in all you know it is also known as BP ok. This is bipyridine it will in coordinate with any metal center in a in a uh, you know five member chelating fashion in this case nickel and we have two methyl of course this is a this is b so we are trying to promote reductive elimination so that carbon carbon bond between these two methyl group is formed usually if we try to do this reaction we will see it's a slower reaction 
of course you can try to heat it up you can usually promote it faster but still it is a slower reaction. Now what you can do is in this particular case you can get the same product formation in a very fast manner or relatively faster manner if you add this anhydride to it ok. So of course again this happened to be the perfect choice in this case it is a it is a tetra coordinated nickel and then what one would expect that this nickel will coordinate with this anhydride in the fashion and here is your bipyridine and methyl methyl since nickel is coordinating with the with, with, with this anhydride in this fashion it will be able to take out the electron from the nickel center and therefore therefore uh, this will act as an electron withdrawing ligand and you will be able to promote reductive elimination between this A and B relatively faster ok and in then th thereby it is demonstrating that reduct reductive elimination can be accelerated by choice of a suitable ligand. If you choose a suitable ligand you have an opportunity to promote reductive elimination faster. Once again reductive elimination requires bulkier ligand as well as electron deficient ligand. So you need to create an atmosphere around the metal center such as it feels like uh, it is not electron rich and it feels like it is sterically crowded. So if you see this oxidative addition and reductive elimination are kind of not mixing well with each other right they are kind of you know on the two sides. So that is why often you see the problem that if in one reaction let us say in one catalytic cycle you need oxidative addition as well as reductive elimination then the choice of ligand is very crucial because oxidative addition will require rich ligand electron rich ligand and smaller ligand preferably but reductive elimination will need bulkier ligand and the electron deficient ligand. So in one reaction in the same reaction if you want oxidative addition and reductive elimination to be facile uh, it is kind of you know kind of really really tricky thing to deal with and this is where you know extremely important factor for this you know organometallic species is the ligand design. How do you design a ligand when it is electron rich in one hand at the same time electron deficient on the other hand. How do you design a ligand which is bulky in one hand as well as less sterically demanding on the other hand. You know this is like almost classic and you know people have contributed and you know famous faculties from different institutes has contributed you know enormously to solve the uh, dilemma but of course now the understanding of the literature is such a conundrum such a mutually exclusive thing can indeed be promoted ok. Now of course another thing uh, we would like to discuss is some more example or you know the ligand effect let us say. So more electron withdrawing ligand we want to discuss little more. So let us take an example since we are discussing palladium little bit or not really we are just taking some example let us say this is a compound of course what we are trying to see we are trying to see the reductive elimination between A and B what uh, you are expecting you are expecting to get methyl methyl plus of course the remaining part PdL2 if it was in plus 2 oxidation state it will be 0 right. This is the thing you should be very very quick in doing. So palladium 2 to 2 goes to palladium 0 for reductive elimination palladium 0 goes to palladium 2 for oxidative addition right. Now in this case if you have a ligand imagine this ligand if you have a ligand which is GPH3 
and if you have another ligand which is CPH2Me, what do you expect the relative rate to be between these two ligands? Which one will be faster? Triphenylphosphine will be faster or diphenylmethylphosphine will be faster? Okay. Just let me give you the value. Triphenylphosphine is faster. This is slower. Why is that? Simply, first of all, triphenylphosphine is bulkier, and this diphenylmethylphosphine is less bulky. So, triphenylphosphine will promote reductive elimination faster. That is fine. Number two, of course, is this is also going to be less electron rich, this is going to be more electron rich right, this is more electron rich compared to this. So, you need a bulkier ligand as well as you know electron deficient ligand for reductive elimination. You see that is why the relative rate is varying like 11 versus 1. In other case for example, if you have PF3 versus if you have let us say P alkyl 3 tri trifluorophosphine versus trialkyl phosphate ok. Which one will be giving you faster reductive elimination whether this alkyl group will give promote the faster one or the fluoride will give the faster one. If you apply the same principle once again you will see that of course, PF3 is electron deficient as well as smaller in size or mostly electron deficient ok. Uh, and this is it, it uh, depending on the alkyl group of course, you will have different uh, you know steric bulk, but this is usually of course, very much electron rich. In this case since this is very very electron deficient you, you will get faster reaction rate overall you will get slower reaction rate. Okay. So, if you have a sigma donor, then you have low or slower reaction rate and if you have a pi acceptor, pi acceptor you have very high, high reaction rate. Okay. So, for example, carbon monoxide, carbon monoxide will promote, um, promote the promote the reductive elimination very faster. We will close the discussion of reductive elimination here. What we have learned so far today is reductive elimination is almost the microscopic reversible, reversible fact of the oxidative addition. Whatever promotes reductive elimination will not be the same factor for the oxidative addition. For oxidative addition we need you know smaller ligand electron rich ligand for reductive elimination we need bigger ligand and electron deficient ligand. Of course, they are kind of non mixing with each other therefore, promoting both oxidative addition and reductive elimination in same reaction is always going to be problematic. This is where ligand design has to be perfected we will look at that in a later class and we have also discussed quite a few example and shown that you can sometimes be able to add a ligand from outside and thereby you will create an electron deficient metal center which can lead to a faster you know, reductive elimination. With that we conclude today's session and that is on reductive elimination. Next class we will discuss migratory insertion and elimination reaction. So, we will also discuss in that we will discuss alpha migratory insertion and alpha migratory elimination and also beta migratory insertion and beta migratory elimination. So, that is for the next class ok. Thank you all. Swayam Prabha, Digital India, Educated India.